God, we ask you right now, God, that God to make the changes in our own life, God. God, to be the call of the God. God, to set forth the good example, God. God, I pray right now, God, God, that you strengthen her in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Not only physically, God, but spiritually. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise the Lord. If you know it, you want to sing it with me. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Has God been good to you, amen? Amen. amen. He, he's been good to Brother Derek, amen. I thank you for being my Lord and my Savior, amen. For being my all in all, amen. Without him, I wouldn't be here, amen. Neither would you, amen. Amen. You know, I got to thinking today how that we need to be the children of God that God's called us to be, amen. No matter what people say, amen, like I said, it was a blessing for me to see my daughter in church this morning, amen. Amen. Oh, I tell you, amen, that just lit my world up, amen. I can tell you, amen, that the only way one can get saved is if God is knocking at their heart's door, amen. No, no doubt the convicting power of the Holy Ghost was here this morning, amen. God was touching folks, amen, and dealing with folks, amen. But not even God will make you come to this altar, amen. That's right. You have to come and come willingly, amen. And I'll tell you, amen, I had a little talk with her today, amen. I believe she made the right choice, amen, even though she didn't come, amen. Because she said, Daddy, I'm just not ready, amen. But God, she knew God was dealing with her. She even admitted God was dealing with her. I said, well, baby, let me tell you one thing. I said, no matter what you think or how you feel, so let me say one thing. When God knocks at your door, don't run from God. Amen, brother. Run to God. Amen. I said, now, I wasn't about to make you go to that altar. When I come back there, you know what you taught me? That I was going to make her come to this altar. Amen. First thing come out of her mouth was, Daddy, I'm not, I don't want to go up there. And, and I know she's big hearted like I am, amen. Gets real emotional real easy, amen. Amen. She's got a lot of daddy in her, amen. amen. That's why she still ain't converted too, amen, because she's got a lot of daddy in her, amen. So I know how she feels, amen. But you know, all I can say to her is, baby, I said, the Bible says it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and pray, amen. Amen. I said, when you're ready, God knows it. And when God starts knocking at your door, you run to God. Amen. I want to give y'all all that advice tonight. Amen. If God's dealing with you about anything in your life tonight, amen, that you know that he's not pleased with you, I want to give you a scripture tonight. It says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Amen. These little bitty things that we hang on to that God's wanting us to let go of, like our attitudes, maybe the way that we think about things, amen. Maybe we have wrong thoughts at times about people or, you know, something going on around us and we begin to doubt. Maybe we got a lot of doubt in our life. It could be any little fault that you have, amen. The Bible does tell us it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. They, what they do, amen, a weed in a flower bed. What it does is it chokes out the good bushes and flowers and things that you want to grow there, amen. A weed will get there and what it'll do is it'll choke the life out of that flower, the roots, the things that make that flower grow, amen. It'll begin to rob from that which produces that flower or that plant, amen, from growing, amen. It'll rob the nutrients and the things, that, how the fertilizer and the things that would help that plant to grow, amen, it takes over. And that's what a little fox does in our life, amen. The same thing that, that we does. A little fox does the same thing in our walk with God. Amen? So you wonder why do I not have a desire to read my word and pray and spend time with God like I used to. Amen? 
Now, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you wonder that in your own walk. Amen? And if you wonder that, amen, let me tell you, it's because of the little foxes, amen, that you've allowed to stay. What they've done is they've drugged you away, amen. They've robbed you of that zeal and that hunger. Brother Ken said this morning that he loves to be around a new convert, amen. One that feels like he can run through the wall. One that has just met Jesus in his own fire for God. Amen. And has that zeal that he can do anything. Amen. If God says it, that settles it and I can do it. Amen. And nobody's going to stop him. Amen. He's going to do all he can to do what he can for God. Right. Because he's got that zeal. He's that fire. That hunger and thirst for more of Jesus. Amen. You and I, at times, we get lazy and complacent because we compromise, amen? We falter and we fail in our study habits, in our walk with God, even spending time with Him alone, amen? It's very critical and very important as a child of God, Sister Sue, that you take time to get along with God, Amen? I'm telling you it's very important, Sister Hope, that you break away from everything and everybody and spend time just with Him. Amen? Right. It's amen. very important that you take the Word of God, amen, and place it upon the tables of your heart and meditate upon it day and night, amen. It's very important. It's the little foxes that spoil these things, amen, that keeps you all bound up, amen, and causes you to drift away from that which is important, amen? Just like the weed does the plant or flower that's in the flower bed, amen? It robs that which fertilizes it, that which helps it to grow, amen? And I can tell you, amen, we can get caught up in our own needs and desires, amen? It causes us to miss out on spending time with our Lord, amen, and Savior, amen? But it's all because of Him, let me tell you. It's all because of Him that you're here tonight. And the Bible tells us, amen, that we're to run the race. And we're to run it well. Amen? I'm going to read some scripture to you real quickly. Amen? Because there's something we need to apprehend today. Amen? And that's, that's that we need to apprehend this one thing. Amen? Forgetting those things that which are behind us and pressing forward. Listen. It says this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Brethren, that's Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. I've got something here I want to read to you, amen. I might as well read it to you right now. Listen, it says, The poorest person in this world isn't the one without money, but it's the one without God giving a God-given vision. Vision requires faith, y'all, and focus. When we get knocked out of focus, Amen. We begin to drift. The Bible says a man without a vision will perish. Very important, Sister Hope, that we stay focused upon the promise, upon Jesus Christ. Amen. That we stay focused upon Him and we stand upon His Word. Amen. And we don't waver or look to the left or right. Amen? Amen? When you get focused on something, let me tell you, 
there's a, a thing called tunnel vision that a dove has. Amen? And what tunnel vision is, is it's where that dove, that bird, amen, a dove, what he does is he only sees three foot this way and, and a three foot this way. Amen? And he can't see anything out yonder. So many of us are out of focus because we look at what's on our peripheral vision, that which is over there and over there, amen. We begin to desire these things that we don't need, amen, because we lack a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm preaching good to you tonight, amen. I'm trying to help you to understand that you've got to overcome those things of this world, amen. And you've got to put God first. You've got to apprehend this one thing tonight, amen. And realize, amen, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way except for by Jesus Christ, amen. And if he's not number one in your life, amen, if you're not focused like you ought to be, if you've not got a vision, Amen. I'm telling you, amen, you're going to perish. Amen. Amen. What it says. Sometimes we don't like the Word of God because it won't allow us to do what we want to do. Amen. But if you're going to do what you want to do, let me just go ahead and tell you, you're not a child of God. Say, wait a minute now, Brother Derek. I've been serving the Lord for 50 years. I love God. But I like this tobacco. Now I'm not on you, amen. If you chew tobacco, amen. I used to chew it, amen. I'm just representing an old man, amen, that's set in his ways, amen. I've been chewing that stuff, it ain't hurt me yet. Right? Amen. 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 I ain't not seen nothing wrong with it. Well, a little drink every now and then don't hurt nobody. No. The Bible says you can drink, you just can't get drunk. <laughs> These are things that you hear all the time. And you hear it out of folks. I had one guy the other day, amen, that just floored me. I would have never thought it. Brother Derek, he said, You know, there's nothing wrong with drinking. The Bible says, Don't say nothing about Ken's drinking, it just says not to be a drunkard. I thought, Man, I can't believe he's saying this to me. And then he turned around, Lamont. I love this guy, man. I, look, I respect him, amen. He's a good guy, amen. And I'm thinking, Man. And all of a sudden, man, he tell, starts telling me this stuff, and I'm like, what do I say to him, God? I said, well, I said, all right, let me just ask you a question. If you, if you ain't drank a beer at all, how many chances of alcohol do you have in your body? He said, zero. I said, that's right. I said, but if you drink one beer, how many chances of alcohol you got in your body then? He said, well, I, there's nothing wrong with drinking. You just can't be a drunk. I said, ah, you didn't answer my question. How many cans of alcohol do you have in your body? And he said, well, I don't rightly know. I said, well, however many percent of alcohol you got in your body, that's how drunk you are. Right? Right. He said, I, I, I will. He said, me and our church, he said, when we take communion, we don't use grape juice, we use real wine. I said, oh my God. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to go to this church, man, and be a bunch of drunks. <laughs> Let's go hang out and watch the football game tonight, amen. Let's see how many of us go home sober, amen. But I didn't doubt him, and I didn't, I didn't accuse him of being wrong. I said, well, brother, I just don't believe like that. I said, for me, one drop is too much, so I'm right. not touching it. I'm telling you tonight, amen, that if you lose your vision, <laughs> you get knocked out of focus, amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, amen, I'll, I'll let, we'll, we'll let Dustin tell you. It's not easy to walk when you can't see, is it, brother? 
you got to be able to feel your way around. Amen. And I'm telling you, amen, when we lose our focus and we lose our vision, amen, we begin to walk as a drunk. <laughs> amen. We begin to lose direction in our life. Amen. And God don't want you to lose direction in your life. Amen. Jesus is the way the truth and the life. And there's no other way except for through Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm here to tell you tonight. Amen. You've got to stay focused. Amen. And you've got to keep the purpose and the calling of God in your life on number one. Amen. He won't be number two. Amen. Amen. That's right. We've got to be careful that we don't come lacking. Amen. Man. I had another scripture here that I looked up. It is found in Second Peter chapter three. Amen. Verse eight. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Right? Amen? Yes. How important it is that we get along and spend time with God. Amen. It's very important. Amen? Oh, I'm telling you, amen, you wouldn't jump in your car and take off to Huntsville and you sitting on empty. Amen? <laughs> You wouldn't do it. If you do, you know you're going to be walking or calling somebody pretty quick. Amen? Unless your car is like a, one of these battery-operated electric ones. Amen? Then you'd probably make it. Amen? But if it runs off gas, amen, I'm telling you, amen, an empty tank won't make it to Huntsville. Amen? I promise you. Amen? I don't care what kind of vehicle. It'd be a little doodle bug. Amen? If it says empty, it ain't going to go far. Amen? But a lot of us try to make it on empty all week and we come rolling in here on Sunday mornings. Amen. We're dry and empty. Amen. And we're wondering why our world's upside down and why we're not focused. Amen. And why we've lost our vision. We have no zeal. Amen. For God. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. You've got to keep the fire burning. Amen. You've got to stay plugged up. Amen. You've got to stay tuned in. Amen. And focused on the will of God for your life. Amen. Amen. You can't allow these other things to distract you. It's the little foxes that's full of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Amen. I'm telling you, amen, something that I've had to learn the hard way. Amen. There was one time I let go of the hand of Jesus. That's why I sing that song. Amen. I can't even walk without holding his hand. Amen. I want you to know, amen, if you'll hang on to Jesus, amen, he'll carry you through this old world. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Come on, bro. We've got to hang on to that which is good and cling to that which is good and shine that which is evil. Amen. The Bible says to lay up our treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt. Amen. Where thieves cannot steal. Amen. You know your I will sit out of the mouth, money to the mouth, the heart speaking. Amen. If you really want to find out about a person, then be quiet and listen. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, amen. Learn to listen. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that call themselves Christians. But they don't even know what the word Christian means. Right. Amen. Right. Hey man, they're just putting on a show. <laughs> they're living any way they want to, and they're calling themselves a child of the King. Hey Amen. They think that because they knelt their knee one day and bowed at the foot of a cross and cried out to Jesus, amen, that they can do whatever they want, amen, and the Bible don't speak of that, amen. No, no, it don't. We have to stay humble as a little child. We have to serve God. Amen. 
God's not here to serve us. He's already done his part by sending Jesus Christ, amen, for you and I, amen, that shed his blood upon Calvary and hung upon a cross, amen, and was buried for three days for you and I so that we too can resurrect one day from this old world and go home and be with Jesus, amen. I'm telling you, amen, God has done it all already, amen. But now we've got to do our part. We've got to get focused again and realize, amen, that we have a race to run, amen? A race to run. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, amen, if you'll get focused, amen, and run the race and run it well, amen, God will avenge you, amen. He'll put you head and not tails, amen. I promise you, amen. He'll see to it that no matter what's going on around you, amen, no matter how big the storm gets, no matter how rough the waves get, amen, no matter what it might seem like, amen, you'll come out victorious. Amen. Over to hell's hell and the grave, amen. No weapon formed against you will prosper, amen. That's right. I promise that don't mean you're not going to go through some things. Brother Johnny, it's good to have y'all tonight. Let's give them all the hands for that. Good to see them here. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I got to tell them the other day, Johnny, I broke down and you stopped and helped me. Amen. You and Penny and Kamar, amen. Thank God for y'all. Amen. I broke down and didn't have a phone or nothing. I thought, Lord, what am I doing? And I normally have my phone, but God, I can't believe my tire. What is my tire flat? Next thing I know, I look up. Johnny pulls right up. Look, you got a flat. I said, I sure do, bro. I said, I got a flat. I ain't got a jack. I ain't got a lug wrench. And I ain't got my phone. And he said, what can I do for you? I said, if you could, just take me right down the road to here. Where we're working, I'll get, I'll get Walter and them to come and help me. He said, no problem. Get in. Penny ain't got up. How the front seat. And let me have the front seat. Well, I felt honored, amen. I thank you for that, Sister Penny. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give Penny a hand clap. I didn't even think Penny liked me, amen. But I found out maybe she had a little love for me, amen. Praise the Lord. I love you, I know you. I love you too. Love both of y'all. All three of you. Even tomorrow, amen. Well, it's good to have y'all here, amen. Amen. But you know, we never know what we might experience, amen? But we've got to be willing to do the right thing, amen? God ain't going to make you, amen? Just like I told my daughter this morning, honey, told her at the table today when we were sitting there after lunch. I said, honey, I said, I want to tell you one thing. I said, when God goes to knocking, I said, don't you run from God. I said, God may ask you to do something that you're not real comfortable with, but just believe this. If God asks you to do something, he'll see you through it. Amen. Right. Yes, you won't do it alone. Yes, Amen. Sir. I said, so whatever you do, don't run from God, but run to him. Amen. Amen. You know, I wanted to encourage her, Courtney. If I could do anything, I sure didn't want to push her away. Amen. I wanted to encourage her to hang on. I, I sent her a text just a while ago for service. Don't mind sharing this. Amen. She she won't mind it. Amen. I said, I just want to tell you, it was great and wonderful seeing you all today. I appreciate y'all coming up. That blessed me so much, and I just want to tell you that I'm so proud of you. You're a good mom. Amen. Amen. And you just keep up the good work. That's what I told her. Amen? Why? It's true, George. She's been through a lot. Lost her husband. Or what was going to be her husband. Amen? The daddy to those two kids that loved her dearly. Amen? And she loved him dearly. Amen? Kind of reminds me of Diane and John Lee. That's when I guess that's when my heart goes out to Sister Diane so hard. Amen? Because God had already worked on me with my daughter and her husband. And when I get to thinking about Diane, I mean, I almost start crying. Amen? Now, I don't know Diane no more than, than a lot of y'all. I know who she is, and she comes here. I know she loves the Lord. Amen? And 
I knew some things about John Lee, amen, and John Lee had some problems, amen, but you know what? To lose somebody that you love so dear got to be hard. Right now, I bet you Diane just really don't know which way's up or down. She's probably holding on with every fiber of her body, amen, just trying to hang in there. Amen. At the funeral, she looked at me, Sister Sue. I said, You are? She said, Brother Dick, I have to be. I said, But honestly, no, I'm not all right. I said, Sis, I said, Just let me tell you something. I know it's hard right now, but it'll get easier. Don't you give up. If you need us, Sister Center and I, we're just a phone call. I meant it. Amen. It didn't matter if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. She could try me. Amen. You go tell her. She can call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll get my lazy tail up and I'll go see what's wrong with her and why I hear Because I know she's hurt. Amen. And I know Sandra will do the same thing. I know she will. We've been put through tests like that already. Amen. But I'm telling you, amen. These things don't happen to one just by accident or coincidence. Amen. I'm not talking about death, but I'm talking about the test and the trial and the tribulation that you go through in this walk of earth. Amen. As a child of God, you're going to experience something. Amen. And if you're not focused, amen, on Jesus Christ like you ought to be, if you've not been praying and spending time, I'm telling you you're liable to make the wrong decision. Amen. It's important. That would take captive of these thoughts that are not of God. Amen? We can wrong our brother and sister ain't said nothing to them just by thinking bad about them. Do you understand me? So Brother Derek ain't never looked at it that way. Let me tell you, you better because it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. The Bible says if you look upon a woman in lust after you've already committed a dog. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says that, amen. You ain't done nothing. You just looked upon her. Randy, you thought she was pretty. You did. Don't you get mad at you, man. He didn't do that. <laughs> man, and maybe he did. Right? Maybe it was the other way around. It was hope. <laughs> you looked up on the man. <laughs> I love both of them. They get mad at me. I'm going to love them anyway. Amen? Amen. The point is this. It's the little foxes. That's all mine. Amen? It's these little bitty things that we don't pay any attention to that's killing the Spirit of God in our life. Amen? Causing us to be low on fuel. Amen? To run out of gas, ready to throw in the towel, give up, ready to just quit. Now you can't tell me if you've been a, ch a child of God that you've not ever had to talk about just quitting. I bet if I took a hand raise, everybody in the house would raise their hand and thought about it, and some of them might have done it for a while. Amen. But the thing is, is now you're back on the battlefield. Are you really trying? Are you running that race? You're doing the very best that you possibly can. Amen. Or are you just kind of getting by? Amen. The Bible says this. Amen. Listen to this. This is found in, in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What did it say? Wanna read it one more time? Listen. <coughs> It says, wherefore seeing we are also 
we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. I'm going to stop right there. Andrew said it. Every weight. Amen? Not just the ones we, we don't mind getting rid of. Not, not the ones that we just didn't really care a whole lot about to start with. He's talking about even the ones that you like. Even the ones you don't want to depart with. Amen. He said lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. It separates us from the Spirit of God. See, God's wanting to quicken your spirit to serve Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and mind. Say, search me, O Lord. Search me. Psalmist David said, search me, O Lord. All that is within me. Right? Because he knew that he had problems. If you read about David, he had some problems. But David was a man after God's own heart. He was a repentant man. He was. He was one that sat at the feet of Jesus, one that would cry out to him, knew that he couldn't do it without him. Amen. You and I have to be that way, amen. If we're going to be pleasing in the eyes of God, we've got to learn to serve God with all our heart, mind, soul, and body. It can't just be lip service, George. Amen? We've got to be true children of God. We've got to realize it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's because of these things that we don't want to let go of. Amen? That God has dealt with us and dealt with us time and time again. Amen. And we're still hanging on to them. Sometimes we think we got things so covered up, even God can't see. Come on. But there's nothing hid from him. Right. Amen. Did you hear me? I said, there's nothing hid from him. Amen. Amen. Well, you might, I ain't saying this to any of you women, you might cover it up with some makeup. As Brother Daniel said, you might paint that old barn, amen, but behind the red paint it's still an old barn. <laughs> that, that's a little better than putting you women in it, ain't it? Yeah. Praise the Lord, Pastor. You're getting smarter. No, I'm not. God's just helping me out. Amen. amen. Yeah. Telling you, amen, it takes Jesus. Amen. If you're going to make it, it's going to take Jesus. It's not these other things. It's not the little things that you desire in this world. Amen. The Bible says, lay not your treasure up upon this earth, but in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get done. Listen to me. What? We need to know what we need to fight against. Should I have something on read to you? Listen to this. Fighting them, sometimes, let, let me just back up. Unless you understand what's worth fighting for, you risk this. First, fighting the wrong battle. Second, fighting at the wrong time. Third, fighting when you shouldn't be involved. Fourth, fighting because you need to win in order to feel good about yourself. Fifth, fighting even though the battle is already lost, but your pride won't let you accept it. Bottom of the line is, you have to stay focused on the goal that God has given you. You've got to stay focused on the goal that God has given you. Amen? Do you know your purpose here upon this earth? Amen? Do you know what God's will is 
for your life. Amen. Are you seeking after God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body? Are you serving Him with all your heart? Amen. See, only you can answer that. But I tell you truthfully, out of everyone in here, we might be lucky if there was one or two of us that was truly seeking after God with all our heart, mind, soul, and body. Amen, brother. Come amen. On. And yes, we sir. call ourselves Christians. Yes, sir. Come on. I'm being honest with you. Amen. We all have faults and failures. We all, all right. allow these little foxes to spoil the vine. Amen. amen. We need to repent of these things and cry out to God just like David did. Did, amen, in Psalms, well, I think it's 121 or 129, amen. I don't know, I have to look it up, amen. But I can tell you right now, amen, if you get rid of the little foxes, begin to put God back in right position, which is number one in your life. Right. Amen. God will do a magnificent and awesome a great, however you want to say it, work with you. Amen? I promise you he will. All he wants is a willing servant. Somebody willing to serve him and obey him. I said it this morning, the Bible says if you love God, you'll keep, you'll obey God. And I heard LeVon say behind me, and he'll keep his commandments. So many times we too get knocked out of focus. We find ourselves running out of gas. Find ourselves on the road having a flat tire. No way of getting along. It takes God to come by and wake us up. Do you understand? God's shaking you tonight, amen. But it's up to you to do something about it. And I'm going to ask you tonight, amen, be honest tonight with yourself. <clears throat> Say, hey, if you've got some little foxes that's spoiling that vine, maybe doubt, maybe unbelief, it may be other little foxes like Drinking or smoking or chewing tobacco. Huh. It may be cursing. It could be anything, amen, that God's not pleased with. Whatever it may be, I'm going to ask you tonight to come and bring it to God. And ask God to take a hold to these little foxes and to help you to be on fire for Him. What about you tonight, amen? There's some things that you know that you need to change. You realize tonight that, hey, I can't do it without you, God. I need you to help me. God, I've covered it up and I've tried to hide it. God, I know, Brother Derek said that there's nothing hid from you. I know that you spoke to me tonight, God. God, I want to be all that you've called me to be. Don't you want to be all that God's called you to be? Amen. I know I do. Maybe not an easy altar call for some of you because it means you've got to swallow your pride and say that you're wrong. Let me just go ahead and tell you. Drive's not fattening. Just go ahead and take a bite out of it. Get up from where you're at and run to this altar. Amen. Why? Because you want to please God. Not Brother Derek. Not anybody else. Not your spouse or your mom or dad. But just because you want to be who God's called. Let me tell you, amen, so many times. It's that easy. All we have to do is humble ourselves. 
but we let that old pride hold us back. Because we tell ourselves we'll be all right. I've already given it to God, but you're still having problems with it. 